Welcome to Strip Cover Look, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I'm Adrian Fort, and we're here for another poetry discussion. Hey, we've got poetry on Mondays on the channel. That is what I am doing. I am making that promise to you now. This year, we will have poetry on Mondays on the channel. Wednesdays will be for novels. Right now, that is Fairy Tale by Stephen King. Uh, there will be occasional Friday uploads, but I'm not going to be able to make it an every week thing. And as always, you know I'm going to fall off at some point. But look, I'm also on my personal channel going to make the goal of one video per week a my personal channel, a link to which can be found in the description below. That's where I talk about philosophy and movies, and I'm going to be doing video essays, things like that going forward. So uh, I'm going to make a more concerted effort, especially towards the video essay portion of those videos, um, of those uploads, I guess I should say. Um, but um, yeah, I, go over there and subscribe there as well on my personal channel um, to be kept abreast of everything I'm doing here on the YouTube, almost everything. I work in the shadows as well. You don't know that but I'm working in the shadows. Um, we are here for the poem known as Come Slowly Eden, which is, of course, from Emily Dickinson. You saw the thumbnail. You're not here by accident. And as we are doing poetry on Mondays here this year, we will also be doing National Poetry Month, which is a poem every day of the month. April? I think, top of my head, not remembering real quick. April. So we're going to eclipse 200 poetry discussions this calendar year. So let's get into things. Here is the poem, poem 211, in the complete poems of Emily Dickinson. It reads as such. Come slowly, Eden, lips unused to thee, bashful, sip thy jessamines as the fainting bee. Reaching late his flower, round her chamber hums, counts his nectars, enters, and is lost in balms. Come slowly, Eden, lips unused to these bashful, sip thy jessamines. As the fainting bee, reaching late his flower, round her chamber hums, counts his nectars, enters, and is lost in balms. Hey, bruh. It's about sex, bruh. But is it? Is it really? Yes. Yes. Un unequivocally. This is about sex. But is it? Yeah. No. No, it is. Most certainly. There's um, almost nothing else that it's about, at least on the surface level. Not even the surface level. So here's the interesting thing about this poem. There is a subject and a theme. Normally, the subject is what is on the paper. The theme is what the poem's about, about, okay? So the main thing here, the main idea here, the main main in this poem that good good bruh but is it that if you ask me is really a question because if you are unfortunate enough to have done enough digging on this poem you're gonna see you're going to eventually see you're going to eventually find some interpretations of this poem. Some people who tell you they know what this poem is about, but I think, I think I've got a better reading than all of them. And I think there's a couple things to blame there. One, Emily's dashes. The dashes that Emily Dickinson uses, for which she is so famous, maybe infamous. Two, General consensus. Once someone puts an idea out there and it is well-respected enough, they are well-respected enough, an appeal to authority that you shouldn't do. Once someone with enough respect puts an idea out there about a poem, and it's understandable enough, people don't really like to give it any pushback. So, 
we're going to start back at the top here. There's subject and theme. And here, the bees and the flowers are the subject. They're the thing on the page. Sex is the theme. The bees and the flowers are conveying the idea about the sex, the good good. The appointments. That is what's happening here. Most poets stop there. Emily Dickinson, however, is no most poets. So, the way to delve deeper into this, I think, is by exploring what most people tend to agree this poem is about. If you search hard enough, you're going to find the opinion that this poem um, is about, you're going to get what is sort of classically referred to as a feminist interpretation. You will find most interpretations have the male equals a bee, the female equals the flower slash the garden, and fair enough. In fact, we even get those things here. Uh, we have round her chamber in reference to the flower slash the garden, kind of, Eden being the garden, the flowers being the fruits, counts his nectar. So we've got those things set, enough, set up fair enough. But where you're going to get, I think, a different interpretation on this channel versus other places starts there. Starts here, I, says, I guess I should say. Most interpretations of this poem go ahead and make what I think is mistakenly the sort of stereotypical leap therefrom. So, a lot of the places you get an interpretation of this poem, the male, the bee, is the aggressor. The female, the garden, the flowers, is the victim of this sexual encounter. I don't, not only do I think that that is sort of a crass interpretation of this poem, not only do I think that that is sort of a lazy interpretation of this poem, I think it's super wrong. I'm not sure how we really get there other than simply accepting the common place arguments prior to reading the poem. Let's read this poem one more time. Come slowly, Eden, lips unused to thee. Bashful, sip thy jessamines, as the fainting bee reaching late his flower, round her chamber hums, counts his nectars, enters, and is lost in balms. I think you would be hard-pressed, really, to substantiate that common interpretation. Um, starting right at the beginning, come slowly, Eden. We are not telling the bee to make his way slowly. We're reminding Eden, come slowly, okay? Don't come out whole hog, right? Slow things down. Maybe got a drink, you know, you put on some John Legend. Don't just come out there guns blazing. That's to begin with. The Eden, the flowers, being told to slow their roll is the very entrance to this poem. Not the bee. Lips unused to thee. Lips unused to Eden, suggesting that Eden is used to some lips. Eden, the Eden in question, the flowers in question, the feminine in question is used to this type of thing, lips unused to thee. Suggest that the thee in question is used to lips. Bashful. Lips unused to thee, bashful right? 
lips unused to thee, lips unused to you, which are bashful. That's how I'm interpreting those dashes there. Sip thy jessamines, or sampling your effeminate awares. As the fainting bee, reaching late his flower, reaching late his flower, implying there was a time to be there, and this bee's sort of dawdled. This bee has not been aggressive. Round her chamber hums. Okay, so he's he's digging the John Legend music. Maybe the Hennessy's hitting, right? That's where we find the bee. Where we find the bee counts his nectars. Round her, or, okay, okay, reaching the flower late. Round the chamber humps, kind of, you know, romancing. Counts his nectars. He's adding up the hints that have been given to him. Where are we in this process? Enters only after Eden slash the flowers slash the effeminate has been told, hey, cool it a little bit, all right? You know what you got going on. Cool it a little bit. Only after Eden, the effeminate here, has been told, those lips are not used to yours. This isn't someone with whom you have that groove. We are reminded that the he in question is bashful. Even as he sips thy jessamines, thy jasmines, thy flowers. And then we get this. Enters. Not a whole lot of code language going on there. Enters and is lost in bombs. Now, at the end of this thing, we know why Sweet Eden was cautioned at first. She got that good good, and she knows it. Once exposed to that good good, that bee is helpless. Once exposed to that good good, during this appointment, that bee is defenseless. So now, we get a different level to this poem. We have the subject level. The subject is the birds and the flower, or the bees and the flowers. Have I been saying birds this whole time? I hope not. Birds and the bees, that's where I'm getting this from, but anyway, we have the subject level, which is the bees and the flowers. We have the theme level, subject, theme, the theme being good, good. And then we have a substrata. Now, the true brilliance of Emily Dickinson is not that we have subject, bees and flowers, theme, sexy time, and then substrata being the woman being the, the emotions, the actual subjectivity of the thing, and that subjectivity of the thing being stereotypical. No, the true genius of Emily Dickinson here is we have the subject, we have the theme, and then we have that substrata under all of it, which you only get there if you get there, right? So many readers, okay, so we have that substrata there, which is completely counterintuitive. Not only that, not only is it just that the female is the aggressor here, but the female is the aggressor here and being told, hey man, you gotta watch it, because you know you got that good good, and once you give that good good, 
that bee can't help but want more. That bee can't help but to come back. So with subject, theme, substrata, all working on different levels, it's, this is what makes Emily Dickinson so difficult to read. This is what makes Emily Dickinson so difficult to agree on. But it's what makes Emily Dickinson so easily to return to. She's got that good good. Right? If we were, okay, let's back up a little bit. Come slowly, reader. Minds unused to thee. Okay. Bashful. Sip. Okay, no, hold on. I did that wrong already. Come slowly. Emily, minds unused to thee, bashful, surface level maybe, read thy poems, as the fainting bee, as the reader, reaching late his flower, reaches late these poems, comes to these poems willingly and expectantly, but here we are a couple hundred years too late to meet Emily in her full glory. Round her chamber hums, around this canon of absolute monster poems, counts his nectars. Hey, you know what? I, I really like I Died for Beauty. I really like um, I Taste a Liquor Never Brewed. I really like... Uh, where is it here? Dreams are well, but waking's better. I really like, I tried to think a lonelier thing than any I had seen, some polar expiation, an omen in the bone of death's tremendous nearness. I really like, I've seated, I've stopped being theirs. I'm counting all of these nectars that I like. So I'm going to take this poem, baby. And I am lost in balms. I am consumed by this poem. So this is one of the... Emily Dickinson is so hard to agree upon because the substrata of the poem, which I can't say she doesn't always write with, I don't always get there. I don't always get there. The substrata through which Emily Dickinson writes has to be dug and dug and dug and dug for. So once you get there, you're only getting there with everything that you brought into the poem and survived the dig. That's why I disagree with the classical feminist interpretation of this poem. Because I didn't bring it into the poem. When you're talking about individuals who go through poetry and offer criticism, write a paper about it, write a blog entry about it, make a YouTube video about it. Oftentimes, these are individuals who have, essentially, the same degree. And that's what I'm, I love about YouTube opening things up, because I don't think that's necessary. In fact, I think it's very harmful. But I can tell you what that degree is. That degree is essentially a degree in feminist theory. The entirety of university for English literature, every class I had, I was prompted to write a paper on feminist theory. Now, did I do that? No. No, I did not. But it's often what you're encouraged to do so it is a tool with which people who have that degree this degree my degree it's a tool with which they fight fur furiously because they're very good with that tool if 
80% of the papers that you wrote in college were written with hauntology in mind, another subject that I talk about fairly extensively on this channel, or nihilism in mind, every time you read a text, you would be tempted to put that tool to labor. The only thing that went wrong here is I think it's the wrong tool, or at least the wrong perspective with that tool. Maybe it's a hammer, and you're using the hammer end of it when you should be clawing out a nail. So, that is what I have for this, the first poetry discussion of the year. We're going to have poetry on Mondays, so be here on Mondays, because I'm going to have poems. Wednesdays will be for novels. Fridays will occasionally be for other things. Look, I've got, got something real unique in the works, and I'm not sure when it's going to be done, but once I get that rolling, I'll be able to have some videos coming up. Uh, but that is all I have for this. It really does help me out here on the channel. If you decide to hit that like button, if you find yourself by here, here by chance but not design, consider hitting the subscribe button because literature is all I talk about here on this channel. And hey, I hope to have you back for the next video.